Hi folks, this is Robert Jackson Bennett here in my living room on a Friday night at 9.18 p.m. There are a lot of fun things that I could be doing right now, but instead of doing those things, I'm here with my two good friends, Sam Sykes and Delilah Dawson, and they're going to read me some slash pornography uh, <laughs> for reasons. So uh, Sam, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Sam Sykes. Uh, I wrote some books, and uh, I'm in my office right now. Cool. And I agreed to do this, but like not with the kind of enthusiasm that would promise that I would agree to do only this. So while we're doing this, I'm also just you know just posting some nudes. Stuff starting strong. We're starting strong here. Just, uh, just you know nudes. Just nudes. So is it like a thigh shot? We're gonna get some thigh. I mean, you know, just I'm not that cunning. No. You know it's, what you should do at some point in time is, um, uh, come on, uh, the actor from Smoking the Bandit, you know, with the mustache. <laughs> yeah. That like, so he did like some nude pics of himself, but he was covered in puppies. Oh, I remember that one. You should do that with your old ass dogs. Oh, they're old. They yeah, don't like. Know. That'd be great. <laughs> I don't know why you haven't done that already. All right, and on that note, uh, Delilah, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing good. We're Woo! Doing good. All right. Yeah. So, it's my understanding that this is about Deadpool, who is a comic character. Yes. And, uh, also, it's got Sabella hey. Strix. Uh, it's got Sabella Trix Lestrange in it, who is oh. also in this from the Harry Potter series. Oh. All right. So, it's erotic slash fic. And uh, y'all can just go ahead. And All right, take it away, folks. Oh, you know you, know you, you you couldn't stop us. Mm, um, yeah, no, no, yeah. I couldn't. Okay, <clears throat> okay. I've had to fortify myself with like two gin and conics, so God help us. What's a conic? <laughs> gin and it's conic. what happens when I'm not very good at mixing drinks. No, gin, right. and, uh, gin, gin and colonics. Math and proportions are not. I do have a Death Star glass though, so I've got that going for me. Okay. All right. That's cool. <clears throat> Uh, for this uh, erotic friend fiction, I'll be playing Deadpool. Oh, yes. wow. Okay. I will be reading the part of Miss Lestrange. All right, curveball. Uh, you didn't expect that. <clears throat> Deadpool rocks into a ramen bar covered in blood. He's hungry. Hungry for meat and sloshy noodles with shit on it. You know, the good stuff. Bellastri Bellatrix Lestrange runs a long, bony digit across the rim of her now empty bowl collecting the very last drop of miso broth and sliding the tip gently into her mouth. She withdraws it, leaving behind a grin that is just regular sexy and attractive in that weird way that would make you feel bad if you judged a guy for accidentally getting a boner at the theater because he's just open-minded. She pushes, pushes a strand of witchy wild hair out of her eyes as she looks over the new edgy guy who she definitely won't get sick of seeing in another three years. <gasps> Whoops, accidental boner, Deadpool thinks. I should have thought about that before I patted myself down with butter and talcum powder and squeezed into this skin-tight supersuit. Using his powerful boner dar, he slowly pivots around the restaurant, letting the predator naturally seek its prey, kind of like when a lion sees a house cat and isn't sure whether to eat it or do it, and if so, in what order. Maybe it's the intoxicating scent of seaweed, but something firmly gyrates him to the right with all the power of a twister spinner. There he sees a bewitching woman clad all in black, except for the weird bits of exploded prison and muggle blood artistically splattered across her murder hippie skirt. He was a tall drink of water, and then someone had added a lot of protein powder and some fruits. Bananas and berries, mostly. No overly sugary stuff like apples or things like pears, which everyone says are good, but they must be high or something because they taste like sand. And blended that drink of water together and poured it into a lot of leather because that's all superheroes wear these days. And I'm not saying spandex is flawless, but come on. Traditions are traditions for a reason. Also, you could barely see his boner, so like, what's even the point? All the same, she angled a long leg out and kicked a bar stool out in front of you, in front of him. How are you, lovely? She asked, Britishly. Deadpool looked her up and down. Oh yeah. Boner City. Well, don't you look like a tall drink of sex on a stick, but wrapped in velvety chocolate coating of evil. Basically a murderous blow pop, which sounds promising. He sat on the bar stool next to hers, his leathers creaking in a manly, bonery fashion. 
So what's a witch like you doing in a noodle joint like this? And then he <laughs> winked. But you couldn't see that because his entire face was covered because he was secretly really seriously ground meat spread over chewed bubblegum ugly. But she didn't know that. Yet. Now a man can't, couldn't put a drink on a stick. Them's was just facts. And it was also true that a lady couldn't get herself greasy based off a clumsy metaphor. But Lestrange was not your typical lady. And this guy didn't have your typical stick. And that wasn't a typical drink. And that metaphor was clumsy as hell, but that only made her all the more greasy. Just popped out of Azkaban, she whistled, which all women do when they're aroused, I'm told. Sought a little sustenance, she said, drawing her S's out very sexily. Uh, um, so, like, I want to pause right now and say this is very Monty Python in a way that is difficult to appreciate. All right, Delilah. Which should I? All right, I'll. I'll yeah, you can keep it up. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to just to a different uh, to a different uh, British accent. Are, are you Let's saying go. that is not a good Helen and Bottom Carter uh, reproduction? That's probably how just, she actually talks. All right. Yeah, just just somewhere, keep going. Somewhere, Tim Burton has an, a boner he can't explain. I think yeah, then, yeah, they got divorced. I don't know. Anyway, they do. Oh, Delilah, take it away. <laughs> As as cabin, he asked it. That sounds like a fabulous place to vacation, provided the street sweepers show up regularly to clean the gutter. So what's good here? I would assume the ramen, but how are the slightly cooked men? Hot and wet? They're hoping this can be done by Wednesday. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's your comment I think about so. this script. <laughs> no, as Azkaban? As Azkaban? As cabana, it's like one of those words that sounds like something everyone mispronounces, but it's actually... Well, fuck, you get the gist of it. She winked one eye, the sexy one. And that's not all you can get. The ramen's okay. With the sound of metal creaking, she pointedly spread one leg over the other. But not as good as the broth, she said, using the word broth as an innuendo, which people do all the time in Chicago, so it's not weird. Don't you wish we could ask Wes Chu about that right now? I bet he has thoughts on broth. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only person I know in Chicago. There's no such thing as Chicago. Nah, true. It's a dream. <clears throat> hey, go ahead. Innuendo, in your endo, it's all the same thing, Deadpool said, sliding a leather clad paw up her leg. He started at the ankle of her black leather boot, which was less dominatrix and more Laura Ingalls Wilder's grandmother. But who was into that? I don't, I don't get that. Yeah, reference. that's beyond me. That's above Did you guys sit and read Little House on the Prairie, Laura Ingalls Wilder? This, um, I figured this. there was like a house, a prairie. I mean, I didn't really need to open it up. The boots weren't sexy would be the basis of okay. that. Cool. God, I, read a book. Hey, on the little house on the prairie? Yeah, no, those boots weren't sexy. I if feel like what's worse different. is probably they didn't, have, they didn't have any toilet paper, which would have been just a disaster to really try and engage with sexually. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> ah, his finger to shut up. As his fingertip slid up, they encountered roughly 4,000 ripped black petticoats. It was like a backstage fight in a Tim Burton film. Her leg felt like two sentient angry broomsticks tied together with barbed wire, but he fought his way up beyond the Goblin City to the glorious thatch of her witch's hut. <laughs> God damn. Okay, she thought to herself. He had found the 4,000 petticoats and gotten past them. That was always the hardest part. It was a cool fashion choice, but sometimes she wondered if that contributed to those long, lonely periods. Maybe it was a subconscious thing, she wondered, hiding the realest part of her behind layers and layers of societally dictated forms of femininity. Maybe, privately, all those talks about being ashamed of her body and that one time her roommate had caught her looking at her wand a little too intently had taken their toll, creating a new identity bereft of any genuine emotion or sexuality, a mask so thick that even she couldn't see through it. Maybe it wasn't her who had committed all those crimes, but the mask. Carved out of raw, quivering shame of those early days with a knife she swore would be used to protect herself, but somehow lost control of. She would have thought further on this, but then she felt hand, her, his hands go up and her vagina just went nuts. Never had Deadpool's gnarly digits spelunked a shadowy crevasse like the hot meat and murder pie of one Bellatrix Lestrange. It was like riding a bucking bronco, a midnight black nightmare with rampant mane and furiously bunching haunches and terrible ground manners, and he held on for dear life as he attempted the Konami code in a rain of sploosh and swore he'd never leave the house without his rain poncho and galoshes ever again. That was definitely a female orgasm about to happen. She had had one or two in her day and definitely knew what they felt like. 
like a really good washing machine. Or at the time she once thought she saw Tom Petty at the supermarket, but it was actually just a large guy wearing a straw hat. This, though, was definitely not that. She reached out and seized him by the black and red mask, wrapping fingers around his throat in what might otherwise be quite alarming, but in this case was super sexy, on account of the previously mentioned female orgasm about to occur. At this point, the waiter slid in and asked, And what will Monsieur be eating tonight? Why is he Swedish? Because, uh... Tom's English. What was that? I mean, it wasn't a Monty Python old woman, but I... Can you do it it once more? And what will Monsieur be eating tonight? No, no, in the the accent you originally did then. Oh, I don't even know what I did. Um, In any case, the waiter had thoughts. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Deadpool looked up. Grinning fiercely, even though nobody could see it, but you could still kind of tell because the mask pulled weirdly. And Deadpool said, What am I eating tonight, my good sir? Only one Bellatrix Lestrange? That's why they call me the Merc with the Mouth. After a thoughtful moment of desperate finger twiddling, he added, And I'll have the ramen. You're not going to be able to slurp much slick, frothy noodles after your tongue is too tired from peppering my steak, pal, Bellatrix Lestrange said. But since she was well in the throes of an orgasm, which this definitely was, it all sort of came out. Oh, 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 oh. The waiter hurried back to the kitchen, rocking a hell of a boner, which he attempted to hide under his little waiter towel. Meanwhile, Deadpool just kept doing what he was doing, because that was honestly the best way to get a lady across the O-line. And he didn't want to see this witch with blue ovaries, or whatever they called it, when they almost did the thing, but ultimately didn't, and got pretty pissed about it. So he kept doing that thing. And he was also thinking his ramen and a nice Asahi beer, and maybe the nice things that might happen to his own throbbing dong if Bellatrix ever got around to reciprocating. Oh yes, she shrieked. Oh yes, almost. Almost. (laughs) Almost? She sounds like Mrs. Pickle Wiggle. And she meant it, too. Not like in that way to make him think he was doing a good job. Really, he wasn't. She was super about to blow. Like that instance where Grandma just pours a whole tureen over gravy over the dry-ass turkey, and it just seeps into every damn orifice, and your dad got mad and you that you ran out from the Thanksgiving table, but shit got too intense. Like that. Times like a thousand. Deadpool was an edgy guy, and he wanted to send her over the edge, and there weren't any turkey basters lying conveniently about, so he used his other hand to honk her tit, but in that sensual way that ladies like. Not like, honk, honk, but more sophisticated than tuna in Tokyo, but very, very sensual. Like something Lando Calrissian would do to a very high-priced escort. (laughs) She tripped. She definitely meant, oh shit. Here it comes. By Gandalf's left nut, I'm about to... Wait just a minute, someone screamed from the restaurant, where everyone had mostly been trying to get on with their meal and ignore this scene. A limber young man, eyes weighed down by the thick glasses on his face, sneered up. How the gosh darn heck is um, Miss Bellatrix Lestrange going to know what Gandalf is, let alone what his nuts look like? Deadpool, being a gentleman, did not stop. He did not even slow down. He kept on valiantly twiddling, twiddling like there was no tomorrow, and the new president was going to get a snook pretty soon. I know that, he said, staring directly into the camera and completely shattering the fourth wall. That is the sound of a fan. He looked down and cocked his head in that dead pulley way, and there went my boner. But I repeat, he did not stop what he was doing with all eleven of his fingers. Bellatrix looked up, irritated that her one-way meat train trip to the bone zone had just hit a goat on the tracks, but unable to look away. Look, it's just a turn of phrase, she said. It's still Earth, right? Doesn't that mean I might have read Lord of the Rings at some point? Yeah, interrupted Deadpool, except it would have had moving pictures and the elves would have been slaves and we wouldn't all be so fucking confused over who played Gandalf versus Dumbledore, which is a very sexy thing to say. When the fan didn't budge, he added, Now either put on some of those elbow-length veterinarian gloves and help me out, or stand back and pick up some pointers, or pretend you're on the log plume at Six Flags because things are about to get moist with a capital M. But it's... it's... it's a betrayal of the immersion, uh, 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 the fan pointed out, which might be sexy to a certain subset of people, so you shouldn't judge. 
The world is built on a very carefully crafted foundation, the likes of which could be uprooted by such flippant and, frankly, embarrassing n n name dropping. Okay, that might be, said Bellatrix, who is damn near ready to open the floodgates. But clearly, if the foundation is that delicate, it can't be that strong to begin with. You are, after all, buying into a world where there's magic brooms in. Man, what's going on down there? Is that three fingers? Fucking nice! Magic mermaids. This thing I'm doing, I, I saw this on a bumper sticker on the back of a very big truck once, Studpool said, cunningly and linguistically, as he made a very crude gesture. If this fan will back off, perhaps I could demonstrate a little something I like to call the splurple stink. He made like he was going to pull up his mask, but then got shy and waited for everyone to be looking elsewhere because even his chin was pretty grody, although maybe that texture could add to his skills below the belt of tricks. And that, that right there, uh, the fans shrieked out. Deadpool has never showed reticence when displaying his visage, however grotesque. His entire character arc hinges on making other people uncomfortable. Surely you must agree that, that this shyness totally ruins the, the, the character. Bellatrix would counter that, but she was just orgasming like a motherfucker. Deadpool did a comical double take and glared at the fan. I am allowed to have feelings, you mule and quim, he shouted. Maybe I'm a little secure, insecure today, because don't you ever have a not-so-fresh day? God, you're just like my mom. And then just to fuck with the twerp, he added, I looked a lot better in Van Wilder, don't you think? What's a quim? Uh, uh, the fan asked. Ah, uh, you know, a kitten face, the pink taco, the slippery slope, the bajingo, the holy hatchet slap, the smiling sea urchin. Stop me any time. Rubbing himself delicately, he shouted, Pop like school is failing us all! Oh, like a ber bergina, uh, 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 the fan said. Vagina, Bellatrix corrected. Vagina. Va, va, hard V. Vagina. There you go, she said. Then she looked down at Deadpool. Wait, that's what a quim is? Oh, you can't spell squirm without quim. All I know is that if Loki thinks it's cool, it's got to be cool. That greasy little fop could bang half the people in this restaurant if he crooked his little finger. Like I am doing now to you in the vagina. Vagina, Bellatrix corrected. That's a weird thing to call me during finger baiting, but I guess it's better than daddy. Oh, dang, she announced. Suddenly, remember, there was a finger banging going on. Then she segued all sexily. Dang. Dang it. Dang it. That's close enough to bang it, Deadpool thought, unzipping his leather skin suit to let his wang unfurl. But then he remembered the importance of consent. Bellatrix, do you consent to having the shit fucked out of you in this ramen restaurant while this weird fan watches and kind of rubs himself? He asked, consentily. Oh, hells yeah, my quim, she shrieked. And then they banged. They banged so hard that the fans had exploded. The end. That was, that was, that was All right. You can't see it or hear it because I'm applauding, and also because applauding is not happening. But, um, well, guys, goodness gracious, that's some, that was some good stuff. That was really, quality work. That was some that quality was work. Well boned. That was well boned. Uh, God. All right. And that's what we do with our time. Right. All right, so I think we're all very proud of ourselves. I know that I am. I know yeah. that this has been, I mean, when when I think Friday night, this is what I think of. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by the Slash Fake Corner with Sam and the D-Saw. I just made that up. Uh, and and and, uh, and, uh, and me. We hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. And if this happens after Christmas, I don't really give a shit. <laughs>